Hello and welcome to ProLines Pro. We'd be honored to show you a little bit about how ProLines is used to create a new design. Simply start in the top left corner and select uh, File and then New. Um, ProLines uses something called parametric hull design, which means you enter parameters of a general hull type and then once you've started that uh, parametric design, you can alter the general shape that's provided uh, according to your wishes. So in this case, let's just start out with a round sailboat uh, in inches mode, and the stern type uh, to start with we'll leave as open. Its length overall will be 360 inches or roughly 30 feet and then half beam uh, it will be uh, five feet uh, about 10 foot at maximum beam um, minimum freeboard uh, height above the deck above the water will be 40 inches for maximum draft 24. the angle of sweep back of the bow is about 35 degrees but let's change that to make it closer to uh, 15 degrees so it's more plumb and then uh, stern angle 40 degrees will be will be fun to do. Let's go ahead and start there. Now we can immediately decide whether we want to display stations, water lines, or butts, the standard uh, design uh, criteria for actually building a vessel and uh, also displaying the vertex net or for the sake of very quickly taking a look at the surface and being able to modify it uh, before we start generating water lines and stations. Sometimes just looking at these blinds is easier. Okay, so now we have the hull immediately drawn for us. And uh, in order to change the shape, let's say, for example, we're not crazy about this uh, waterline beam. I'd like to increase it somewhat and uh, add some fullness and uh, make the hull uh, a little bit flatter. We're going to left click on the, with the mouse held over uh, this vertex point hold the mouse down and drag it and you can see the hull shape uh, changing in real time. If we then also left click and pull here and down you can see we've increased the displacement to below the hull quite a bit and we have uh, increased the beam uh, at the waterline uh, considerably. We can also do a little bit more help here and uh, help that out a little bit. And you can also tell from these B-spline curves whether you're introducing uh, oddities or um, unfairness. So I'll just do an extreme thing to sort of show you. And you can see as the bunching lines show here and the stretching over there that this probably <laughs> isn't a nice smooth, smooth turn, stern shape. So let's pull it back to where it belongs and uh, give it a little bit flatter look. Also, we'd like to have a more modern uh, stern that is more wide and open. We'll go ahead and uh, pull these across and make sure that we get a nice smooth stern like that. Um, as you can see up here in the perspective view, there's a hidden, uh, hidden surface view that's been generated all this time. Let's uh, uh, slide left click and slide the um, vertical slider here to see into the boat looking down its length and then left click and drag uh, to see along its length. If we want to temporarily uh, remove the vertex net so we can see this a little more cleanly, we can click the vertex button and turn it off, shown up here. And then if we turn the vertex net back on, we'll be all set to go. Now, one thing we notice, even from the perspective view and down here, we've sort of given her a belly here and not very fair in the, in the profile. So let's turn the net back on and uh, start manipulating this a little bit. One thing we want to do is we'll left click and start bringing the hull up a bit, smooth her out a little bit here and make her a little bit more reasonable. And uh, now we can see I've kind of pinched this up a little bit, so we'll uh, do a little bit of work to make it a little bit more reasonable in the bow view. Um, we're always seeing, according to standard drawing practice, this uh, view on the right side, which is the first half of the vessel and then the after half is shown over here. That's to avoid confusion as to overlapping the fore and aft versions, uh, areas of the hull. Also, we can see up here that this has been pulled out quite nicely, but the stern hasn't been matched. 
So we'll uh, try to get a little bit more fair by manipulating it in our profile view and then rechecking the other views. Now, one of the things we immediately note is over here in the profile view that we've got kind of a funny array of vertices here that indicate maybe that hull has been stretched out in an odd way. So we're going to zoom in by left clicking here and then zooming, left clicking and dragging the uh, mouse uh, box. And we can see the hull zoom in here. And we have a couple options. We can start trying to do this ourselves. And you can see right away this is kind of an arc. So one of the tools that we have for us to make sure that turns into a nice profile straight, if we wish, is to use uh, options and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, tools. And, uh, and going down here, straighten a row or column. So we'll left click that and it says click on start and end vertices. We'll click on the start and the end. And you can see the vertices have been put in a nice row. Uh, we're all set to go. So now uh, uh, let's immediately calculate some stability and hydrostatics for this initial design. We come up here and we can click Calc uh, and see the menu. Or we can click on the uh, calculator and that will generate a hydrostatics table of uh, all the characteristics of the hull, including her displacement in salt and fresh water and various coefficients. Uh, the other thing we can do, of course, is to select Calc and then Stability. And then um, we'll make this maximum heel that it's going to roll to to be 120 degrees. Uh, most vessels uh, uh, usually uh, will indicate uh, rollover at some point uh, around that point. So let's go ahead and calculate Stability by left-clicking on the word Stability. And you can see that the uh, GZ, or writing arm, is computed here. And max stability occurs near about 50 degrees, but the boat doesn't uh, become stable upside down until all the way over here at about 110 degrees. Um, you can then click along all of these parameters uh, to look at metacentric heights, load waterline lengths as a function of heel angle. So here you have load waterline and heel angle. Uh, longitudinal center of buoyancy, flotation, and center of gravity are all shown right here as a function of heel angle. And the longitudinal center of gravity, which is shown right here, uh, doesn't change with heel, but is offered as a reference uh, relative to the flotation and the buoyancy because that will affect trim of the vessel. And if we select trim, you can see that, whether it's trimmed down by the bow or the stern, and then uh, moment to trim one inch is shown right here uh, with heel angle and then inches pounds. Very good. Let's close things up right now and uh, we'll, uh, end this uh, first session of how to use ProLines to design and analyze the first vessel.